Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Cassidy. I'm one of the chaplains with the National Chaplain Service out of Washington, D.C. Here to talk to you today, we're looking at the topic of grief and loss, specifically with the Afghanistan withdrawal and what you might be experiencing. Um, first off, I like to say that if you're if you're looking to read more, to educate more, uh, just to get a better sense of what grief and loss is, I think Dr. Alan Wofelt has written extensively on grief and loss. He has books, he has workbooks that you can work through as well. They're a great resource. Uh, but let me first follow up and let me say this a little bit more succinctly than anybody else you will probably read will say. Uh, the term closure the term closure is a crap term. And so I, I want to just throw that out there for y'all. Uh, folks will look at you and say, well, why don't you have closure yet? Or maybe you need some closure or let's work towards closure. Um, do you think you'll ever really be closed on grieving a loss and grieving a sacrifice that you've experienced either in your life um, in general or during your service in Afghanistan in particular? I don't think so. I, so I think one of the, the realities is what we try to work towards is some type of understanding, some type of incorporating our grief and loss into our stories. But the thought that closure uh, can happen is nonsense. And so I wanna encourage you all that if you feel like, wow, you know, the last time I was in Afghanistan was 10 years ago and I'm still grieving the loss of my friends. I'm still grieving the loss of my marriage that ended during that time. That's okay, that's pretty normal. I wouldn't expect that you would ever not grieve the loss of a friend or grieve the loss of a marriage. There are certainly are gonna be times where those losses become more present and you uh, feel them more. You might become very sad, you might become more emotional, you might even cry and that's okay, right? But the, the thought of closure, I think, is more, uh, more to help the other people around you so they don't have to see your grief. And so I just encourage you to put good people around you, people that are going to understand that grief and loss is an ongoing thing, that you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. You might have good weeks and you might have bad weeks. Uh, you might have good months and then maybe have a bad month, depending on what's going on in the news, what's going on with your timeline of, of life, but then also with anniversaries around deaths of friends, you might have times that are very difficult and just hurt. And that's incredibly normal. And so I, I want to help normalize that for you. I think there's another piece that's very important uh, for everyone to understand is that how we measure time is linear, right? We have, uh, October the 1st was just a few days ago. And so we measure time by a calendar. That makes sense. That's all very linear. How we experience grief, loss, and healing is not a linear thing. It can go um, up and down. It can go sideways, back and forth. It can kind of dip down and, and curl back. I mean, it's grief. We don't get to, to determine how the course of grief goes. There are some things that are that are more important um, or, or more more helpful as we as we cope with grief and loss. And one of those things, I had a, an old uh, provider for me once upon a time um, that said, you know, you, you have to begin to make peace with your past, with your grief and your loss. And I was like, well, that's that's crazy. I don't know how you expect me to do that. And he said, no, let me, let me just take a couple steps back. I'm not saying you have to, I'm not saying you have to get over it. I'm not saying you have to just get on. I'm not saying you have to, to be better, be different about this loss. I'm saying that you need to make peace with it. And so every morning when you get up, you're going to have the grief with you, right? Um, it, that's how grief and loss works. It, it happens, you know, you might have some remembrances in different parts of the day. You might have smells, you might have sounds, but he said, when you wake up in the morning, Go to that place where where you can remember uh, your friends, where you can remember your loss. And if it's you're going to say a quick prayer, if you're just going to say, hey, miss you guys, miss you, buddy. Uh, something that kind of marks that time every day. And so you're recognizing that you've got this grief and loss. You've got this horrible thing that's happened in your life. And to recognize it every day 
instead of waiting for it to to show itself in your life in, in maybe an unexpected way, can, can be incredibly healing, but also incredibly empowering to how you cope with that with that loss and, and then with that grief. I think William Shakespeare said a long time ago, right, in Hamlet, and he was talking about, um, actually it was Ophelia that was talking about all these different herbs and what they do, and um, she mentioned rosemary specifically, that rosemary is this thing that, uh, you know, she said, you know, take rosemary, use rosemary, pray, love, and remember. And so I think just looking at, at, at that old, you know, at Hamlet and what Ophelia's guidance was to pray, love and remember i think those are good ways to address grief and loss to allow grief and loss into your life that one you can you can pray certainly uh, that you can love others that you can admit love for those that you've lost and for the time that you've lost um for the life that maybe you have lost around you and and to remember uh, and, and rosemary is one of those insidious herbs that grows in your garden. Um, if left untended, it will take over everything. It will grow, it will spread, uh, it will permeate every part of your garden if you allow it to. And so what you have to do with rosemary, even intending to it, is you have to maintain it daily. Uh, at least every few days, you have to go out, you have to, you have to clip, especially if it's getting large, you know, if you let stuff go along for a long time. Um, we all like to talk about student loans. We think student loans are wonderful. Uh, they help us get through education. They help us uh, get to a point, hopefully we get a degree at the end of that time. Um, but I like to throw in my student loans every once in a while. Uh, I did everything I could to not pay back those student loans for the first five years. I took forbearance, took whatever else they had and said, okay, five years, I'm gonna try to, to do everything else and just kind of establish what I've got going on. And I ignored the student loans. Now, at the end of that time, I still had the same degree at the, at the end of, of paying off my student loans, still had the same degree. But what I did was I took a $60,000 debt that as me pushing it off for five years, made it a $90,000 debt. Did I have the same degree? Absolutely. Did I have a different bill to pay? You bet. And why was that? It's because I pushed it off as long as I could and said, I will, I will address that. I will attend to that when it's more convenient, when it fits more when it fits more into the life plan that I have or where it just seems to make more sense for me. Um, now, if, if I could go back, I would start paying on those student loans right away, right? I, I would just hop right in. I wouldn't miss a beat. I'd make some sacrifices in other places, make time and, and maybe work an extra job so I, so I could pay those student loans down. Uh, that's how grief is. And that's how, how we experience grief and loss is that the loss, the loss of a friend, the loss of, of time, you know, sacrifice uh, that we have made uh, for our nation, a loss of marriages, friendships. The reality is the, the end thing is still there. We have still lost friends. We have still had uh, friends that have, have been killed in combat. We have still you know, spent 20 plus years in Afghanistan. Uh, those are all true things. The longer we let them go untended for ourselves and un, un, untended in our own lives and hearts, it will continue to grow if we don't maintain it. And so one thing I'd like to encourage you all to do, you have a lot of resources from the VA. Um, you can go to your local chaplain service, you can go to your local mental health team, and, and just to throw a plug in there, if you go to your local mental health team, it doesn't mean that you're crazy. It doesn't mean that you need to take medication. It doesn't mean that uh, you have some pre, you know, oh, if I walk in, they're immediately going to say this, this, and this about me. Go in and talk to people. There, there's no harm in, in talking to folks. I have had a lot of vets that I've worked with over the years that have said, hey, I don't really want to take any medication. Okay. The medication might help, but if you want to do it without the medication, that's fine. We can certainly work towards your goals uh, and we'll work in concert with, with the mental health folks. We'll work in, in consult with docs. Uh, we're all going to work together to help you. And we don't have a prescribed notion of when someone walks in the door, we have to do ABC. Um, or first thing we're going to do is talk to you and, and do our best to understand you to give you a, a safe space to discuss what's going on, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, and just hear your hearts cry. Uh, one organization that, that we've done work with a lot in the past is the TAPS program. 
Uh, it's treasury assistance provider. It's a network that allows you, uh, that has allowed Gold Star families to grieve, that has allowed uh, those folks that have survived um, suicide, those folks that have um, been around suicide, that have lost family members to suicide, that uh, it, they help with grief and loss. They have a lot of amazing, great resources. Of course, we have the, the VA crisis line. Uh, there's a, there are a lot of things that you can reach out to, to talk, to help, and just to simply say, hey, I, I can't do this on my own, or I don't want to do it on my own, or maybe me doing it on my own hasn't been very effective. It's time to just, you know, to ask for help. And, and that is okay. And that's actually pretty darn wonderful. Asking for help, when, especially when you're looking at the immense grief and loss, uh, not just friends that you've lost in combat, but then also looking at, hey, how's this withdrawal from Afghanistan impact that? Uh, the sacrifice of time, the loss of life that I've uh, that I've experienced and been a part of. How does all of that stuff, you know, work in my life? That's a lot to unpack, and that's a lot to unravel. I don't think it's you're, it's going to happen in a in a 10 minute podcast, but you know, I think that if you can start the conversation with somebody, go to those people you can trust, start the conversation, look out, you know, I, the VA is always there, we're always there to help. Look at your local vet center. Uh, they're attached to the VA, but in a very anonymous type of way. So you can go in and talk to the vet center and, and they keep things pretty private. And we have a lot of active duty folks that will go to vet centers uh, because they want to stay outside their chain of command. They want to stay um, apart from the medical system. That's okay. Go to the vet center. The big thing is, is that you talk to somebody and that you have help in addressing your grief and loss. I want to thank you all for, for tuning in today, clicking on a couple buttons and joining this, uh, this podcast. Thank you all so much. I pray that you would have a wonderful day and that as you approach your grief and loss, you would give yourself the space and also yourself the grace to allow for, for the hurt and the pain to be addressed in your life. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. Goodbye.